Today we're going to talk a bit about 40k Math Hammer and how I like to calculate damage output when units attack each other in the game. Hello and welcome back to Warspex Tactics for a much requested video. I often make Math Hammer comparisons on the channel between likely units, so today I thought I'd just run through a bit of a simplified version as to how I come up with those numbers in the first place. I certainly don't think that Math Hammer is something that everyone needs to do, but it can be quite fun to have a look at if you're interested. In general, Math Hammer tends to be doing more analysis on the dice rolls than you would do in a normal game, and coming up with some other numbers that you might not necessarily have had just from the raw stats of the units. Things like average damage outputs are a good example, as they basically collate all the hit rolls, wound rolls, saving throws and damage outputs for each weapon, and can just give you a bit more of a handy single number that you can use as a ballpark figure to get a bit more of a grasp on what other units might be expected to do any, any one turn. As I said, the main reasons that I do it would be to either compare units against likely enemies, say for example if you have two space marine units armed with las cannons that like to sit around in their deployment zone shooting tanks, it'd be interesting to see their point efficiency when they're trying to take out a few common vehicles. Otherwise, you can just generally use it to give a bit more of a better understanding of what any one unit is going to be capable of in-game. Say if you have a unit that you use regularly, such as a three-man squad of aggressors, it could be helpful just to know the rough average damage that it will do against certain units. Obviously, it's the sort of thing that you generally pick up through experience and trial and error, so it can be a bit of a fast track towards understanding your units. The way that I'm going to talk about today is just literally doing the maths myself, because I find that a bit quicker. There are several apps that you can use to calculate average damage output and things like that. One of them actually being called Math Hammer, which I have used before, and it does seem to work well. And if you're not quite so happy with multiplying numbers and things, then it could be an easy way to do that without having to think too hard. You basically enter your weapon's profile and any other special rules in it, your ballistic skill and the target saving throw and things, and it'll give you out some average numbers, and other apps and things exist where you can get damage distribution curves like the one that you can see on the right, which for bigger, more swingy weapons where you say you have like D6 shots or D6 damage and things, then it can be quite helpful to actually see the curve as it drops off. This is actually like the percentage chance of the various different wound outcomes that you might have from the shooting phase. Say for example you can see this weapon has a 20% chance of getting 0 wounds, and then various other chances of getting other wounds all the way up to 12. Personally I find these ones just a little bit more info than you really need for the most part. I prefer just to have one number in my head for a simple comparison, and then just bear in mind how swingy the weapon is likely to be if you do have things like d6 rolls in it. In any case, let's go through a simple example. First you need to decide what you're going to be calculating in the first place what range the models are going to be at, if it matters for rapid fire weapons, and any other special rules that are going to be applying, such as combat doctrines for the space marine intercessors here. I then go through a typical shooting phase for them, start with the number of shots, and then multiply by the number of successes that you'll get at each dice roll in the shooting phase. So these five intercessors have ten shots, so we'll start with that. They hit on threes in the shooting phase, which means that four out of the six possibilities on a dice roll will score a hit, so you'll get a hit on three, four, five, or six. So I'd multiply the number of hits by 4 divided by 6, so that'll give you 6.66 hits. It's a similar chance for the wounding, so again I'd multiply by 4 divided by 6 again, giving you an average of 4.44 wounds. And then after AP from the bolt rifles, the guardians will only save on a 6, which means 5 of the dice rolls are going to be successful, basically anything but a 6. So I'd multiply by 5 divided by 6, giving you an average of 3.7 wounds on the Eldar guardians. If damage matters, then I'd generally do that at the end, Say if you're firing an overcharged plasma gun against a multi-wound vehicle, I just multiply the number of successful failed saves by 2, as it has a damage characteristic of 2. In any case, in terms of expected damage output, if our intercessor squad is firing at a large squad of Eldar Guardians, we can expect to, on average, kill around 3 or 4 of them, though obviously any one dice roll could be higher or lower than this. If you have any weapon characteristics that have a random number in them, say a d6, then in terms of the multiplication value, I'd typically multiply it by 3.5, as that's actually the average for a D6 dice roll. So say if you were firing a frag missile launcher with D6 shots, I'd start out the calculation with 3.5 shots per frag missile. Similarly, if you were firing a LAS cannon at a tank, at the end for the damage phase, I would use 3.5 as the number of expected damage per damage D6 result. The dice results get a lot more complicated when you're firing random damage weapons at multi-wound models that don't have loads of wounds. Things like, say, three-wound Borgrin, for example, that can be a bit more complicated to calculate. And for simplicity, I'm not going to go into it here. If you have a mortal wound mechanic in the weapon, such as sniper rifles, they will do a mortal wound in addition to normal damage, wounding on a six. 
I would typically calculate that mortal wound chance entirely separately and then add it on to your number at the end. So with five Space Marine sniper rifles, I could expect three and a third hits, and then of those three and a third hits, I'd expect just over 0.5 mortal wounds out of them. So I'd take that number and add it on to the rest of the sniper rifle's damage output after doing that previous calculation. You can treat feel no pain type shrug off saves, such as Death Guard Disgustingly Resilient, just like another set of saves that you add on to the end. If those Eldar Guardians had something like that, you just have to multiply by 4 divided by 6 again, as that's the number of successful rolls that will get through the Disgusting Resilience. You can also add on buffs and things as well, say what would happen if these intercessors were in range of a captain. You could either add them on to, say, the calculation when you did the hit roll, or you could literally just add it on to at the end. For example, reroll ones on hit rolls and wound rolls will typically equate to a 17% increase in eventual damage output. So you could just multiply your whole damage total by 1.17 at the end if you have a captain nearby. I did an entire extra video on which buffs have different percentage changes to them, so you could check that out and I'll put it in the link in the video description. If you're wanting to compare units like for like against one target, I first typically calculate the amount of average wounds that they're going to get for the squad, and then basically wait for points. I usually find it easiest just to think about how much damage 100 points of said unit would do, even if you can't necessarily field it that way. For example, if we wanted to see which unit was more efficient at killing Eldar Guardians, and we wanted to compare this Intercessor Squad to the Aggressor Squad, and see which was best at killing anti-infantry point for point, I'd first work out the Intercessor's average damage output, which was 3.7 as we just did. I'm assuming that the Aggressors aren't firing twice for this comparison, but on average the Aggressors will do 8.4 wounds to the Guardians. For the Intercessors it's very easy to wait to 100 points, because they already cost 100 points in that edition now, so basically they'll have 3.7 wounds caused per 100 points of the unit. For the Aggressors, if we wanted to know their efficiency by 100 points, an Aggressor squad now costs 135 points, so I would divide the 8.4 wounds that they cause, divided by 135, and then multiplied by 100. So per 100 points of Aggressors, you're killing 6.2 wounds of Eldar Guardians. So while they're shorter ranged and potentially a bit less durable, the Aggressors will do a lot more damage to Light Infantry compared with Bolt Rifle Intercessors. Obviously the Aggressors will do even better if they do manage to fire twice. When interpreting the numbers, I would remember that the raw number is an average and certainly not guaranteed. I would very much take it as a ballpark figure that's likely to be roughly representative. Naturally, I'd bear in mind that the way that the actual damage is going to fall, so say if you're firing with damage 2 weapons, then obviously the amount of damage you're going to cause with the unit is likely going to be a multiple of 2. So say if your unit would average 5 damage on the enemy unit, it means that they're most likely to either deal 4 wounds or 6 wounds to that target. I would also bear in mind when weapons are likely to be very swingy in terms of getting their damage output, as they might have an average of a certain number of wounds, but realistically they might either just get far higher or absolutely nothing at all. The worst defenders for this sort of thing tend to have multiple random characteristics within the weapon's profile, which are pretty much all or nothing in terms of actually whether you get any damage through whatsoever. With D6 value weapons, say the Imperial Knight Thermal Cannon would be a good example, you have both a D6 shots number and also a D6 damage characteristic. If everything goes well, we could potentially be blazing away with 6 shots and then roll high for each damage result, netting you a potentially very high max damage output. But you could get very unlucky as well, just roll a single shot and then miss with it, so it's got a reasonable chance of doing absolutely nothing at all. The Orc Shock Attack Gun takes this to a whole nother level, as it's got a random strength number as well, giving you another point of failure where you might just roll very very low for the strength result. Also, when you do have your numbers, I would also bear in mind all the other caveats that go with the actual unit in question. Naturally, effective range is a really important one. If your unit isn't in range, or isn't in range of the ideal targets, then that's going to make it worse. Also, many units have other special rules, or different movement abilities, that sort of thing. So it is important not to just apply this in a vacuum, otherwise you'll get strange ideas about which units are best. Usually, if you do want a very good idea of exactly which units perform better, it's also likely to be a good idea to compare against a few different likely targets to get a good feel for what sort of damage they'll do. So I think we'll leave it there for this one. In a future video at some point, I'll do something pretty similar and talk about how I like to compare the durability of different units in-game. So let me know if there's any other ways that you like to calculate Math Hammer or any decent apps that you'd recommend for doing so yourself. I look forward to hearing your thoughts and ideas. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics for regular 40k content coming out each day. And if you have been getting good value out of my videos lately, I'd just like to mention that the channel has a Patreon page, which is what keeps these coming quite so regularly. If you are enjoying a lot and would like to help support, the Patreon link is down in the video description below.
and channel patrons enjoy a few benefits, such as being able to see videos early each week, regular polls to see what sort of things come next for the channel, and also automatic entry into the Allspex Tactics prize draw, where I give away some decent sized kits at the start of every single month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support the channel, then the link is down in the video description below. A massive thank you to all the patrons for allowing this channel to be possible. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.